everyone and welcome. You're watching Spotlight on more. I am Nuong Falong and I bring you the current affairs edition of Spotlight Mondays and Wednesdays 8.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Today on Spotlight we are discussing the resignation of the country's first special prosecutor Martin Amidu and he has resigned earlier today. We are getting into the issues. We are wondering, uh, asking as many questions as you are asking about his resignation, what led to his resignation and what exactly it means for the fight against corruption. We have a few guests who will be phoning in uh, into the discussion with us. Uh, but before you meet them, we're going to go for a quick break. Uh, today on the show, you will also be able to join us via phone. So please go to MX24GH on social media. You will be able to tune in and share your opinion. Before we get into that, we'll go for a quick break. Opinions are like onions. Everybody has one. Abortion is a no-no. As a human being, you must take responsibility for all your actions and inactions. Your misjudgment shouldn't be enough grounds to take a life. No, 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 no. I disagree with you because look, if you do not legalize it, people will go to black protests anyway who might end up not just kill the baby but the mother as well. Why should I waste my time joining a long queue under the hot sun to vote for your political party knowing very well that nothing would be achieved at the end of the day? Something will be achieved. It's your civic responsibility to turn out to vote. Vote and vote for a good leader. Governments need to cater to every graduate, diversify the economy, invest in other sectors. But the government cannot do it all. That is why we need the youth to take up the mantle and set up their own businesses. That is how we we'll create economic viability. Here on Opposing Views, we take your views, my views and the views of the experts and put them in the right context for you, our discerning viewers. Welcome back. You're still watching Spotlight on MX24. We are discussing the resignation of the special prosecutor, Martin Amidu. Now, Martin Amidu resigned from his office earlier this evening uh, in a very uh, Herculean blow uh, against, to the fight against corruption. Now, Martin Amidu was nominated by President Nana Adudankwe Kufwadu as special prosecutor uh, on January 11th, 2018. He was subsequently approved by parliament. Uh, Martin Amidu is one of the people whose appointments came with a lot of uh, approvals. People endorsed his uh, appointments to office. A lot of people believed he was the best person and biased to fight corruption. We're going to take a quick SOT uh, from when he was integrated into office. Investigation, initiation, and conduct of proceedings of alleged or suspected corruption and corruption-related offenses involving public officers and politically exposed persons in the performance of their functions, as well as persons in the private sector involved in the commission of alleged or suspected corruption and corruption-related offenses." Unquote. The remit of the office, as you can see, is broad and challenging because I'm fully convinced that Mr. Martin Amidu, a prominent legal personality who held the high office of Attorney General of the Republic in the government of the late President Professor John Evans Atta Mills, has the requisite integrity, competence, courage, and independence of character to discharge effectively the responsibilities of this new office. The special prosecutor, once confirmed by parliament, will carry an extraordinary responsibility, independently and impartially, to fight corruption. 
the special prosecutor, as the act say, states in his preamble, and I quote, shall have full authority and control over the investigation. And that was President Ekufuado during the swearing-in of uh, Special Prosecutor Martin Amidu into office. A lot of expectation there with that very hopeful speech uh, in sharp contrast to what we have heard this evening. And I'm going to read his letter uh, announcing his resignation. And it reads, uh, kindly refer your excellency to your letter with reference number uh, dated 30th January 2020 and hand delivered to me in person uh, on February 2020, formally offering me appointment as the special prosecutor. I also refer to my letter dated February 17th, 2020, accepting Your Excellency's offer of appointment as the special prosecutor made in your said letter. Now, the purpose of this letter is to convey to Your Excellency, Mr. President of the Republic, that pursuant to Section 13, 8 and 10 of the Office of the Special Prosecutor, 2017 Act 959 and Article 1453 of the 1992 Constitution, I am resigning my position as a Special Prosecutor with immediate effect to enable your excellency to take steps to appoint a replacement to that position as required by law the one condition upon which i accepted uh, to be nominated as a special prosecutor when you invited me to your office on 10th january 2018 was your firm promise to me that you will respect and ensure same by your government for my independence and freedom of action as the special prosecutor. Several things have happened since then, but your reaction to my letter with reference number OSP uh, SCR 2012-20 dated 1st October 2020, conveying to you the conclusions and observations of the analysis of the corruption risk assessment and anti-corruption assessment of the Ajapa Royalties Limited transactions convinces me beyond every reasonable doubt that you had labored under the mistaken belief that I would hold the office of the special prosecutor as your poodle after receiving my letter under reference on the 1901 October 2020, you ordered your chief of staff on October 2020 to deliver an urgent message personally to me the same day. When she could not reach me on telephone, she decided to invite me in writing. In her letter uh, stating, I have been directed by His Excellency, the President of the Republic, to deliver an urgent message personally to you today, October 2020. I am looking forward to seeing you as requested. I received the Chief of Staff's letter the next morning, October 2, 2020, and reported to her office as requested. The message she delivered to me was that you had instructed that I was not to do anything about my report on Ejapa. Uh, this, this, this is the letter that was written by the special prosecutor and released to the office uh, of the president, was also released to the public and delivered to the office of the president. Uh, we have investigative journalist Manasse Azuri Awune joining us on the line. Hello, Manasse. Good evening. Good evening, Noam. Manasse, does this come as a surprise to you? Not at all. I am rather surprised that Martin Amidu stayed this long. I felt he should have gone a long time ago when he realized there was no commitment on the part of the government to fight corruption. Why, why do you, uh, you think he should have you know, left earlier? Because he was trying to sort out the issues within the office. Well, I praised the government very highly, the president highly, when Martin Amidu was appointed in January 2018. 
but in that article titled The Craziest Presidential Appointment, part of which I've shared on my Facebook wall, I stated that the success or otherwise of his office would depend, uh, depend on the support from the president. One of the two things I mentioned, independence and funding. And we are learning that that independence has not been given. Uh, when you don't have it, there's nothing you can do. Some of us are privy to some of the issues he's mentioning today. And everything points to the fact that, well, you can fight corruption or you can claim to fight corruption, but don't touch my anointed. We know what happened to Domenico when he put his uh, lenses on the deal involving Osako Mapo. But Mizu was quite well, and they liked him until he decided to touch a Jaffa. So if there's commitment at the center to fight corruption, then it will be very difficult for anybody to succeed, because the ecosystem we operate in would need the endorsement from the top. Otherwise, there will be one frustration or the other, and you can function. Manasa, the, the president has an incorruptible tag. Do you think this singular action in any way dents the image? It is not just this singular act. When President Ekufado started his amorous relationship with Jospon, I wrote then that we should forget it because uh, being incorruptible and being friends with the most corrupt uh, business conglomerate, because they are cited in almost all the scandals I've investigated since 2013. And civil society, specifically the Ghana Integrity Initiative, was very livid when the president went to Just Pond and started praising him all over. That is not to uh, say that was the only issue. We realized that he started acting as a clearing agent for some of his uh, appointees. We know that what happened in the uh, Australian visa scandal, everybody has been cleared, but the scandal happened. So are we saying angels or demons from hell came in and caused that harm? So if this thing happened, then the incorruptibility may just well be one of the uh, fake titles or uh, characters that we were made to believe. But... If you are incorruptible, let's see it on the ground. Let's see how people are really dealt with. And let's see what you give to people like Domelevo, people like Martin Amidu, and the media when they intend or try to uh, bring out some of the things that are not happening. But some of us really, really bought into this idea that Mr. Ekufuado, Nana Ekufuado, was going to at least be different from what we saw in the Mahama era. But as I speak, I'm very disappointed, and I've stated this many, many times. Scandal that you worked on recently, the CEO was uh, suspended and actually sacked. Doesn't this in any way prove to you that there is a fight against corruption? Well, that is an isolated case, and I acknowledged it and also praised the president for the actions that have been taken. But there are many also who believe that, well, this was so glaring that nothing else could have been done about it. But sometimes you look at the general atmosphere, you look at the numbers that we see, it shouldn't just be a drop in the ocean. When there's opportunity to crack a whip, we expect the president to do that. When he does it well, we praise him. But generally, I'm unimpressed about what I have seen so far. And the most disturbing part is when you see that those fighting corruption are being fought. And some ambassadors made this remark last year that those fighting corruption were being fought. And we realized that civil society has even not had it easy. So all of these go to undermine the institutions. If somebody takes the level's position today, will they be as brazen and fearless as he was, knowing what awaits them? No. Uh, uh, Manasse, recently you made some comments about your expectations from uh, the Special Prosecutor's Office concerning the PPA scandal. What do you think will become of the case now? We wait to see who takes up that position and whether the issues that have been discussed 
will be resolved so that that person would have the uh, independence to do their work. Because a PPAC is a politically exposed person, and sometimes when we have such people who support the governing party, it becomes very difficult to deal with them. But I would hope and wish that uh, these monies that are being found in this account, 41 million citizens, that's what we are told, went through the bank. What about those that may have been used as cash to buy property or stashed somewhere? So one would expect that this will be done, but I must also say that if the government is serious in fighting this, they don't need the office of the special prosecutor. The Attorney General's Department is there, the police ID are there, the EOCO is also very active. What we have been lacking all these years is the fiscal will. And if you don't have it, you can bring uh, an institution from heaven who will still fail in our fight against corruption. Still on the PPS scandal, uh, Manasseh, so far the actions that have been taken, do you find them satisfactory or do you think uh, we need to go beyond that and include other institutions and other personalities? Actions such as, on which special, uh, specific case, please? The uh, PPA scandal. Actions such as the well, sacking of the CEO. For the, P for, the, for the PPA uh, scandal, the soft part has been done. We are left to the criminal part. And if they are to do this case very well, it could lead to very major and massive reforms. It would implicate the banks who take hundred up to hundred thousand US dollars. What did they do about it? Did they flag those accounts? If they did, what did the financial intelligence center do about it? The people who paid these monies into these accounts. Why did they pay? So if we are to do a comprehensive work on this case, it would lead us somewhere. It would make it difficult for banks to now begin to accept such huge amounts into uh, accounts, cash. And then there should be reforms. But when we do the piecemeal approach, let's so just get rid of him and then uh, uh, let him go and enjoy the loot as has been the case these years, not only in this administration, but uh, it has happened over and over again. I did Jida, and I think Abu Ghapele and others were just a small issue. If we allow continue to be a cycle, and if there's no punishment, there will no be the need or the reason why somebody wouldn't do what this man has done tomorrow. Thank you very much, uh, Menasse, for joining us. Uh, with, with that, with those comments, thank you. Uh, that was Manasse Azuria, when an investigative journalist. Uh, he was the journalist that uh, investigated the procurement authority and came out with some findings uh, that led to the sacking of the procurement authority's uh, chief executive officer. Um, Martin Amidu uh, is, is also... Uh, we have another person joining us on the line. Um, hello. Hello, we have Inusa Hello, Fuseni. hello how are you? Hello, hello, Honorable. Good evening. How are you? Good Ver evening, how are you? I'm very well, Honorable. How are you? I'm good. You sound very hearty this evening. Well, not very happy. I'm on the farm. I'm tired. Oh, I see. Uh, Honorable, mm -hmm. we have just been uh, hit with this, the news of the resignation of uh, Martin Amidu, our first special prosecutor. What, what is, what, what's your reaction to, to this event? Well, it was, it was to be expected. What, when you say it was to be expected, what do you mean? Hello, Honorable? Uh, Honorable Inusa Fuseini, uh, has we've lost him on the line. Uh, we're trying to, to reach him on the line. And he was just telling us that uh, the resignation of Martin Amidu, our very first special prosecutor in Ghana, was to be expected. He was yet to share with us the, uh, his reasons for saying that. Hello, Honorable is back on the line. Honorable yeah, the line, the line went off. Yes, th thank you for, for joining us back on the line. You were telling mm. us it was to be expected. When you oh. said it was to be expected, what exactly do you mean? 
Well, when Samidu was appointed in 2018, I said it clearly that the president was holding the tail of a lion. Because if you are holding the tail of a lion, Honorable. Hello, Honorable. Uh, we've lost Honorable Inuza Fuseini again. Uh, he mentioned that he was on the farm, probably has some network issues. Uh, hello, we have Abdallah Banda on the line. Hello, Mr. Abdallah. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, boss. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on the program. Okay, it's my pleasure. He is the, the chairman for Parliament's legal uh, committee. Honorable. Yes. We have all been surprised by the news of Martin Amidou's resignation. That's, uh, before you, uh, Honorable Inusa Fuseni was telling us it did not come as a surprise to him. Do you share these sentiments? Yes. In fact, not long ago, um, a petition called to uh, seek my opinion about his resignation. And I said the resignation of Martin Amidu uh, did not come as a surprise to me at all. Uh, because what are of, your reasons? Uh, I know because of certain, certain, certain reasons. Because any time that Martin Amidu uh, appeared before uh, the Committee on Constitutional Legal, uh, in fact, he was always complaining about money. He was complaining about he not being able to set up his office. He was complaining about he not having enough space, office space to operate. He was complaining about he not being able to um, uh, undertake, uh, I mean, a recruitment of people to but, be able to uh, function properly. But, but why do so, you think he, he did not resign earlier than now? Some, some would say it's a little strategic, especially towards the election. He, he's the only person who uh, is in a position uh, to tell all of us why he didn't resign until now. And even uh, the way uh, he resigned and the extent to which he, he went in publicizing uh, to the public uh, his so-called reasons for his resignation also comes as a surprise to me. Because when he was appointed by the president, did we ever hear or see that uh, he publicized the appointment letter given him by the president? He didn't. So what is the motive behind his resignation and he even went going to the extent of publicizing his resignation uh, letter and the reasons accompanying there to uh, for the consumption of the public. He is the only person who is in a position to know the motive behind it. Honorable, uh, thank you so much for that submission. Uh, ben Abdallah Banda is the chairman of the Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee in Parliament. And he was joining us there. He also maintains that he isn't surprised by the resignation of the Special Prosecutor, Martin Amidu. We are joined on the line again by Honorable Inu Safusaini. Hello. 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 Honorable, uh, uh, w w what do you make of the timing of the resignation? Hello, Honorable. Uh, we have lost Honorable Inusa Fuseni again on the line. We'll be expecting him to call back in to the program. Uh, at this point, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll be continuing with some other uh, comments on the line. I'm feeling very frustrated and bored in Sambula. I'm very happy. If you don't understand, don't worry, call me, sir. I don't understand. 
in this addition, Vodafone Ghana has now made it possible to send money from Vodafone Cash to all network free. We will cross over to our senior reporter for more details. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm standing in front of downtown. You know, uh, oh, I'm learning to yet make a block. I'm a funny as you said. Vodafone, I'm a funny as you said. 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 I'm a funny as he send a many charges, man. No charges. I make J. Na ka charges. I won't win. No money. I can't find BP. Oh, I need food. I food. Oh, I want. For me, I do a lot of online transactions. I just get here. Oh, for bad money. See, the excitement for me is that I get to save a lot on Vodafone cash. Please put me down. I'm so excited. I can now send money to all networks without any charges. Me ye jadi ni ba. A BBA says a Michia Majuma for come. Sika Michia set charges, you know. And don't so do do. Nelson says, say, dear, me the Vodafone cash. Sending money on Vodafone cash to all networks is now free. Send any amount of money as many times as you like to all networks for free. Dial star 110 hash now to send money. Any amount for Masumo. Video 2. Put him in car. And yeah, Musa This is the red. News. Uh, apologize. The future is exciting. Ready? Tale, welcome back to refreshing times at the bar. Be responsible. Be safe. Always wear a face mask when going into any public place. Everywhere ABL products are served have a strict no mask, no entry policy. Everyone who serves you is required to wear a mask for your safety and theirs. While all necessary steps have been taken by the establishment, we rely on you to adhere to COVID-19 safety measures. Keep your distance. Avoid physical contact even while you enjoy yourself. Remember, when you cough, Cough into your elbow or into a tissue and dispose of it immediately in the bins provided close by. Always wash your hands after. Wherever you enjoy club and other ABO products at home or at the bar, be responsible. Drink responsibly. While you keep to all COVID safety tips, remember to stay alert. This message is brought to you by Accra Brewery Limited, producers of Ghana's original beer, Club. No, this is not business as usual. This is a different kind of business. From the global stock market, to our central bank, to insights on insurance and investment, Spotlight is a show for you. Here, we look beyond the numbers. On Spotlight, we'll tell you the complexity behind the figures. On Spotlight, we examine hardcore financial issues. Join me, Philip Nanfuri, on MX24, together with policymakers and experts, as we talk business.
Welcome back. You're still watching Spotlight on MX24. My name is Nuong Falong. We are discussing the resignation of the special prosecutor, Martin Amidu. Now, you can join us with your personal comments on our phone lines, which are open right now, uh, 020473848. That's 020473841. There's also 0550. 331511. Again, 0550331511. And we're expecting you to call in with your comments. Keep it clean and keep it respectful. We're joined on the phone by Madame Esther Ofea Boaji. She's the chairperson at Star Ghana Foundation. Hello, Madame. Hello, good evening. Good evening, Madame. Uh, we have received news of the resignation of. Uh, the Special Prosecutor, Martin Amidu. What, what do you make of the resignation? I, it's a very um, sobering development, and um, it's one that needs to be studied very carefully for the lessons learned. Um, it doesn't very often in our part of the world that you get people in high office resigning on the basis of what may, one may consider principle. So for me, it's a very sobering um, event. It's a very sobering undertaking that we have to study carefully um, in order to learn the lessons, to build our institutions, and strengthen our accountability and governance aspirations as we go along. Uh, some people have said that his resignation is rather expected. Do you, do you think so? I... You know, he, he, he's a man who's been in the job. Uh, since his appointment was announced in February 2018, um, he must have considered it very carefully. In other words, everything, all the facts and where the appointment was coming from, and the fact that he wanted to make a change for this country. As he also said in his letter, um, he, well, he's not an anti-corruption entrepreneur. So, um, and he's well known for his desire to put things um, on a good path for Ghana. I believe that his appointment led to the operationalization of this office of the special prosecutor. Uh, that he hung in there, you know, for two years and over uh, means that he really wanted to get something off the ground. And so maybe there are those who think it was unexpected, but I also think he thought that there was something he could do to actualize this aspiration of Ghanaians. Uh, he details certain frustrations. He also mentions, uh, alludes to the fact that he was not given free reign within office. Do you, what lessons can we learn from this moving forward? Um, he detailed a range of um, reasons. For me, one thing that was telling uh, was the fact that his formal appointment letter, you know, came almost two years after the appointment had been announced. Well, why, uh, why is it uh, the main thing for you? No, I mean, for me, it was one of the things that struck me. Right. You see, because if we, I think the lesson for me as a governance person is that if we intend to make a position work, we need to put everything in place to make it possible for that position to work. Uh, we need to resource these positions adequately to demonstrate that there's a will to make them work. Very often, I mean, when one is in a management position, sometimes there is a temptation to do things uh, quickly, expedite things, and then make them right afterwards. The lesson I'm learning from this is that let us put the structures in place so that we give those who put in these positions a fighting chance to make a success of it. You know, it demonstrates political will to do something. Um, uh, as a governance expert, madam, would you uh, recommend that we immediately fill the position? Um, as a person interested in governance, I think it's in our interest to have somebody in that position, the Office of the Special Prosecutor. 
Um, as the the arrangements there are, there's somebody he is able to hand over to. But whether that person can substantively hold that office is something that has to be carefully considered. And he was... Um, Mr. Mr. Amidu leaves very large shoes, you know, in terms of his reputation, his candor, and to some people, his courage. We need somebody with a certain capacity to hold that office and exercise it um, to the extent that Ghanaians expect. We need somebody, you know, with um, certain caliber, somebody incorruptible, somebody who would deliver. It will require very careful search. I'm not for a minute suggesting that uh, the person he handed over is incapable of doing that. No. But I do think that if we're going to fill this position, we have to do it very carefully. And whoever will be given that position has to carefully search themselves to establish whether they can satisfactorily, satisfactorily uh, deliver on it, so that the purpose of which the position was established is realized. Uh, Madam, would, would you uh, say his timing raises some concerns? There are some people who have said he could have held on until after the elections. You know, there's a saying that a man has got to do what a man has got to do, or in my case, a woman has got to do what a woman has got to do. Sometimes in your person, you know, you feel an urgent need to do something. This man came to this position with um, certain expectations, with a certain passion, and with a certain desire to do something. If in his person he feels he cannot continue, then he cannot continue. So that his timing uh, may be good or bad, depending on your position, on your own side of the fence or your position or your perspective. But as far as he is concerned, he felt he could not continue. So he, he didn't. So I believe that if you want a person with that character, we have to take all that comes in that package. Would you he say, didn't come to make people happy. Would you say we have failed in the fight against corruption? I believe that we have a long way to go. I don't think that we have failed a say. His coming brought or uh, expedited certain things, like the establishment of the Office of, of the Special Prosecutor, our understanding of how that office were, should work. Uh, there are lessons as to what will not make the office work. Um, you see, one thing is that if it's on paper or it's in theory, it's different from the practice. By his taking on that position, we've got a feel of what it means in practice to have somebody in that office. So it is a start. But if, as Ghanaians, we are serious about making that office work, then that office has to be strengthened. For instance, he had an ambition or an aspiration to recruit a cadre of people in whom the culture of zero tolerance of corruption could be inculcated. He had all kinds of visions for that office. Uh, one day, one time, I had the uh, uh, privilege of listening to him outline some of these plans somewhere. So that for for some of us, that could be the standard uh, to which we should aspire as a nation. So it is a step in that fight. We are certainly not where we would have liked to be with the establishment and coming into being of that office. Again, the relationships with other um accountability and anti-corruption institutions have to be clarified and what it will take to make this office work. And the lessons learned, the relationship with the Attorney General's Department, the relationship with um, the Office of the President, the relationship with all of the other entities, the lessons carefully thought out and, um, you know, we push forward. It just isn't a matter for only the government, it's for all of us as Guineans to see and to contribute what we can do to make this particular office work and our fight against corruption uh, work on all fronts. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Esther Ofe Abouaji is the chairperson at Star Ghana Foundation. Uh, again, our phone lines, I'll read them out at 020. 
0548 We're still discussing the resignation of Martin Amidu, the special prosecutor, and its implications for Ghana's fight against corruption. We have someone else on the phone lines. Hello? Hello? Uh, we, we have lost him. Uh, we, we are still uh, trying to connect back to him there. Uh, one of the, the lines that struck many people in the special prosecutor's letter is uh, the condition, the one condition upon which I accepted to be nominated as a special prosecutor when you invited me to your office on the 10th of January 2018 was your firm promise to me that you will respect and ensure same by your government for my independence and freedom as the special prosecutor. In, in, in these statements, we see that the special prosecutor makes some very uh, damning allegations about a lack of support from the presidency. He also makes some uh, alludes to attempts to gag him after he released his corruption risk assessment on the Japa transaction. Uh, we also have another person from Ho on the line. Hello. Hello. Hello, good evening. Your name and where you're calling from? Good evening. My name is Ofori from Ho. Ofori, let us hear your opinion. Hello, good evening. Okay. Um, my concern is the resignation of the special prosecutor. Why are you concerned? Uh, you know... Always we say this, but they say we are doing propaganda because, uh, you know, there are so many issues in the system that the man should investigate. But you see that there is some sabotage behind. He's being influenced that he cannot talk because the way we know him earlier, before he became the special prosecutor, yes, when he went The allegations there, he of sabotage have not yet been substantiated. Uh, yes, but in his letter, he said something like that. Due to one or two reasons, he is not feeling free to work. That is why. So we feel like there is some sabotage behind. Even the president knows about that. Because he's saying that uh, uh, the chief of staff calling him to meet her and all those things, all showing so many things. So, like, it is too much for him. That is why he's gone out. It's Thank too you. much. He doesn't know what to do again. So, in fact, the new person who will come will be worse. Because those men supposed to be the independent person and... You think there's again. nobody else qualified enough for the office? So, yes. There are people who can take that position, but I think they cannot be bold like the man to, to just go out because he's not doing his work. So they will be there and, you know, help them to maneuver the system the way they want, not the way Ghanaians want. So, in fact, uh, only, only let's pray and look forward. Let December come and see what happens so that we we'll know what will happen after December also. So thank, thank you. you so thank much. you so much. And this is a very nice topic we are discussing this evening. And I hope more people will call to contribute. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for you. your contribution. Thank you so much. Uh, we have a Wusu from Kumasi on the line. Hello, Wusu. Good evening. Good evening, my dear sister. Oh, Wusu, what do you make of the resignation of uh, the special prosecutor? The resignation of the special prosecutor, Mark Amidu. Yes. Re reminds me of 2000, 1999 when I was uh, being admitted as a student of the I of IPS. Right. I remember the, the then honorable, uh, the, f the former majority leader, Abam Okay. was there doing our, how do you call it, our matriculation. And he gave a speech, and there was something he said that, Matiami, this behavior reminds me that no matter how hard a stone was struggle to mingle with bees, even at the point of being swallowed, it will be spit out. But as he tried his best to mingle with the NPP, they proved good to him that he is not corrupt. He is not. He doesn't belong to them. Oh. After all, but he's he's he he doesn't. He's, he's not supposed to belong to any party. He's non-partisan. So yes, he can never be said to be non-partisan. 
But can you be somebody who was once the running mate of a or the political but, party? But he left he, the party. How can we say he's non-partisan? He did leave the party. He, was, oh, he, he, he left the party bitterly. He left the party very bitterly. So you think he became he MPP? Wanted, yes, and I think Father thought he could use him for that job. Forgetting that matter, let me do that, we know. We will also cut his own people when he finds them guilty. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, we have Mike from Koforidia. Hello, Mike. Uh, we have lost Mike on the line. Uh, you're still watching Spotlight on MX24, your destination for fun, fearless, and factual content. We're talking about the special prosecutor, Martin Amidu's resignation, and he resigned earlier this evening uh, in a very surprising turn of events. A lot of people were expecting, and there was very high expectations of the office of the special prosecutor when he was appointed in 2018, a lot of people expected that he would deliver uh, and investigate the cases that matter to unearth corrupt practices. We have another one uh, person on the line. Hello. 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 Your name and where you're calling from? My name is Jonathan. Calling from Tepa. Calling from? Tepa. Tepa. Okay. Please. Yes. Your opinion. Well, it's quite unfortunate that this has happened. Were you expecting but, uh, something like this to happen? Well, uh, it looks like Ghanaians sensed this, that it was coming up. It, was, um, it looks like the man's hands was tied behind him. He was not given the free freedom to operate. And so with this, um, most of us really saw that this thing was coming up. And so a man of his caliber, I think he has done the honor about him. It's unfortunate that. What do you think we can, we, we can learn from this as a country? Well, I think it goes out to the older people in office as well as the youth who are coming up. Sometimes when things are really you are around your neck and you think you can't do anything about it, come out like he has come out. So you, you, you think we have learned a lesson to, to be bold? Uh, to me, to me, he has taught me a lot of lessons. Thank you so much, uh, Mike from Kufuridia. We have a caller from Mataheko on the line. Hello? Hello? Hello, I think, I think we've lost him uh, over there. We, we are still discussing uh, the resignation of the special prosecutor, Martin Amidu, an office that he... Uh, was the first to occupy as a special prosecutor of Ghana. There were a lot of varying opinions about the office. Uh, there were some schools of thought that even thought uh, the office was unnecessary. Uh, we have another caller from Kufridi on the line. Hello. Hello. Hello, your name and where you're calling from? I'm Michael. I'm calling from Kufridi. Michael, what do you think of the timing of Martin Amidu's resignation? Uh, what I'll say is, uh, in the first place, I'm, I'm so much disappointed in the government because Why? appointing Martin Amidu, you know, all Ghanaians believe that Martin Amidu would come to deliver. But at the end of the day, he has been in that office and he has not been allowed to perform his duties. But he's investigated some cases. No, he's, he's investigating. But at the end of the day, nothing is happening. And the man feels that he, he, he's, 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 not, he's not doing anything. At the end of the day, we pay him as a nation. We pay him with our tax, uh, the tax years money. We use that money to pay him. And if you are not allowing him to perform, then it's better he resigns because he, 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 he's, not, he's, he's not functioning. And I'm so much disappointed because I believe in Martin Amidu, even though I would attest to the fact that I am an NPP person, but the way they have treated this man in office, it is not the best. Did he and not uh, live up to your expectation in office? Sure. What, what were you expecting of him? I was, I was, I was expecting that at least. You've been, you've been in office for, for three years. You were appointed in 2018. And from 2018 to date, nothing is happening. 
You know, the man is willing to work, but you could, you could feel that his hands are tied. And he, he can't do anything. It's beyond his control. So the honorable thing to do is just to resign. So that he, he, he can also have his peace of mind. Because people are believing that he is just spending. His, uh, he takes salary without performing. And that is not the case. So it would be prudent, he just step aside so that they appoint another person that they feel we can do the work. Because I know it is the MP people who are intimidating him. And if we are doing this as a country, there is no way we will progress. There is no way we will move forward. Because I believe in the president, uh, the Akufadu's government. He said he's coming to fight corruption. So as a president who is coming to fight corruption, you've appointed your special prosecutor. So you have to allow your special prosecutor to operate. So if the government and its people are not allowing him, then I think what he has done is the best. He should step aside and he has done that. I'm so disappointed in, in, in the government. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. And we're still discussing the resignation of Martin Amidu, the special prosecutor. We have another caller on the line. Hello. 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 Good evening. Good evening, madam. Your name and your location? I'm calling from the Crown Office. Uh, why have you called into the program? Tell us. I called to suggest my opinion by Martin Amidu. Tell us your opinion. Yeah. Yes. What do you think about the resignation? Yeah, what I think about resignation is all about it's a fourth thing that is an ad work the Kufado has done to a Ghanaian. Because appointing someone in 2018 and the person has not able to do anything, not even investigation to arrest every single person means that we we'll use our tight first money just to 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 appreciate that man. So Ghanaian should be to have that man responsible by way of arresting that man. Arrest who? I'm been sorry. In office. You're saying uh, Martin Amidu should be arrested? He should be arrested because sitting in office from 2018 up to now, you know. But there are processes to the investigations. And no, processes it's true, take it's time. true that there are processes for two solid years now. No single proof so that someone is corrupt or something like that. But it just came up one day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, he believes that uh, Martin Amidu needs to answer some questions about the, the use of money in the office and his inability to produce sufficient results. I should mention that in 2019, during the, the budget reading, some 180 million Ghana cities was allocated to the office of the special prosecutor. And as of the middle of this year, uh, about 28 million Ghana cities had been advanced to the office. I'm sure the finances will give us, we'll have more details of the finances exhausted by his office much later in the week. There's uh, another person on the line. Hello. Ose Tutu from Kumasi. Hello. Hello. Yeah, this is Henry calling from Techiman. Henry from Techiman. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. You? Very well. Do you think uh, we have managed the fight against corruption? Very bad. Very, why, why very bad. I'm so? really disappointed in the government. Even though I, I am an NPP member, but really disappointed. Why would you choose somebody to fight corruption and then be behind the scene and then kind of pre prevent them from doing their work? Why uh, would you do something like that? As of now, those are just allegations. They, they have oh, not been proven. From, from, from the way the man um, released his um, statement, it, 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 it clearly shows that... Uh, he, they are behind the scene and then preventing him from doing his work. It's very bad. If, if we tend to be doing this, we can't continue like we, this country can never move forward. We'll always be at where we are. Really, I'm very disappointed in the government. Seriously. But we, we have made some effort at, at fighting corruption. Would you say? Madam, how can you, how can you move this way and then be behind the scene and then kind of prevent the man from doing his work? Thank it's you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. And that was his opinion. You can also, you can also call into the program. We have a caller from Wa on the line. Hello. 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 I think we have lost her there. 
but you can call into the program on 0204738481. Uh, we also have another line, 0550331511. Do call into the program and let us know what you think about the resignation of the special prosecutor, Martin Amidu. Nobody could have expected uh, during his inauguration and when he was announced as the special prosecutor that we would uh, be reading a letter of resignation so soon. Hello. Hello. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Your Sammy. name and where you're calling from? This is Sammy from Keta. Sammy from Keta. Yes. Please go ahead. In fact, uh, the, day, the, day, the day has been fought. Your day was going well before the letter? Hello? Hello? We don't release a certain day. Right. Um, and you, you think that we could have done better to, to fight corruption? Oh, we, because of the trust the government has in the man before all of a sudden, and the man, you know, realized that the real master has been controlling him. Thank you so much uh, for that. And there are still a lot of questions surrounding the resignation of Martin Amidou. He has not given us uh, further information beyond the two letters that he has released. Uh, one letter released to the public, uh, his announcement of resignation and a second letter written to the president uh, explaining further his reasons for resigning. We, we have another call on the line. Samson, hello. Hello. Samson, where are you calling from? I'm receiving from Tejima. Right. What do you think about the situation? Yeah. Hello? Samson, yes, go ahead. Madam. What do you think about the situation? Well, some of us are not surprised that Matia Mido has put down his tools. Why, why are you not surprised? Were you expecting... The, the man, since from the day he was appointed, has been registering his uh, displeasure about how uh, the government is treating him. So we... Uh, we, for one, are not surprised that he said he's no longer with the government because... Deliberately, the government knew that most of his appointees are corrupt and uh, uh, allowed Matiamidu to work so within that most of them would be hamper. When, when you, so what you the say government most does of his... Uh, supposedly be the man and deny him the necessary logistics that he needed to, you know, to do his work effectively. Do you have evidence so, to show that person, most appointees are uh, corrupt? Once I have, he has not been resourced to do his work effectively, I mean, the best thing to do is that I, I cannot work. So uh, he has to, you know, resign and then do his integrity. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, that's his personal... This is my thinking. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, those are his personal opinions. Hello? Yes. Yes. Did you, my earlier question, what, what, what evidence do you have that uh, most appointees are corrupt? All right, thank you so much. Uh, and we're still discussing uh, the resignation of Martin Amidou, the special prosecutor, uh, an unprecedented move that not many people expected. Uh, he had been in office and was investigating uh, several cases. Most recently, he released a corruption risk assessment on the Japa transaction. Uh, he makes several references to the events that follow uh, the release of that statement and how that has influenced uh, his, his resignation today. Uh, Martin Amidou uh, also wrote several letters prior to that about the lack of support uh, for his office while he was in office. And uh, we are hoping to hear more about this uh, present, uh, this, news, uh, this news that we have received. And to get more information from Martin Amidou himself when he decides to speak. In the meantime, we will be giving you further updates on his resignation as it comes in to us.
Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Nuong Falong. You've watched Spotlight on MX24. Join us again same time Wednesday. Good night.